Welcome to the final day of the college championship. We're continuing our finals pre-show with the first ever high school invitational where two of the best high school squads are squaring off to test themselves on the big stage. I'm Julian Pastry Time Car, ready to assess the strength of these high school talents with none other Oh, then Alberto Crumbs Rengi for. They're good. They're great. They're better than you and me because some of these kids are grandmasters and in high school. They're amazing. Well, continued growth in the college has led to an explosive growth in high school League of Legends as well. More than ever, high schools are fielding official League of Legends teams and offering curriculum linked to esports. In the 2018 and 19 academic year, thousands of students competed on school sanctioned League of Legends teams with competition culminating in state championships and national tournaments. To celebrate the emergence of High School League of Legends, we've invited two of North America's top teams to showcase high school's emerging talent. And first up, it's a team from Fullerton, California, the reps from Sunny Hills High School. Ooh, there we go. In the top lane, we've got URA. In the jungle, it's Rin. In the mid lane, it's Sick Dot. In your bottom lane, we've got Soon Chang. And your support, Javeen. This team qualified by taking down Troy High School at the North American SEF Championship, where their top winner, URA, pulled off a pentakill on Darius. And I think we were discussing that getting that pentakill instantly promotes you to Diamond 2. That's true. I think he's even higher than that. <laughs> Opposite <laughs> them, we've got a squad representing Woodstock Academy from Connecticut. They were invited for winning the first League of Legends Connecticut State Championship in January of this year in 2019, where they took down Manchester High School in the finals. And they field the following players. In the top lane, it's You Are Destiny. In the jungle, it's Rhythm. In mid, Magic Garlic. In bot, it's Snakeskin Owo. And their support, Nebula. <laughs> They have so much flair with the names already, but the strategies that these guys like to play are the thing that I really want to look out for because some of these guys have been cooking up some Darius strats that I am really excited to see. Yeah, certainly uh, I'm expecting a pretty wild game of League of Legends. Certainly, uh, if we, I think in a lot of ways we expect, you know, as we move down levels of play to, for more of the solo queue to come out. This may be the most organized solo queue you've seen in a while. I mean, I think if you're in high school, you have way more time than the college kid to be playing to be playing League of Legends. And now that you have these sanctioned tournaments, might as well. It's never been a better time to be in high school. Don't drop out, kids. That's true. We have noted that, you know, the freshmen that we have seen here at the college championship seem to be uh, a lot of the more refined, at least mechanically strong players. So certainly there are plenty of stories of young kids kids playing league and just absolutely smashing at the top of the ladder. So whatever happens, I'm excited. But I'm expecting a lot of Yasuo's, Lee Sin's, Fiora's, Darius's. It'll be mostly fun champs, let's see. Well, I think that League of Legends right now is in a state where any champ Have you play to is going to be fun. And there you go, Fiora banned. Sunny Hill is going to respect the power of Destiny or Magic Garlic. I believe he plays it as well. It's all about those mid lane Fioras down here and even the Zillions making sure that you don't have that zooming Darius, that is Zillion and Darius strat that Sunny Hills likes to run. All right, we'll take that away. Rise also taken off the table. That's just a very meta. That's a meta one. They're going to give Woodsuck Academy the benefit of the doubt on that one. Certainly don't want to play against it if they're proficient players. I also. I think I see one coach on stage, so certainly someone's handling pick ban here. Oh yeah, one of these teams that's has way, a coach. That's more organized that than I have ever I'll seen in my you life. Know, when I was in LCS, I did not have a coach. Our dig team did not have a coach. We did not have staff. Well, it was just it's, the all, it's already <laughs> significantly more advanced yeah. than it was before. Silas and Javan also going to get banned. Of note, also Woodstock is using their sub-80 carrot in the bot lane, Kanade. See what he does bring to the table as last band here in phase one. It is going to be the Darius. Uh, no pentakills on URA's Darius this time around, but we've seen that people that like to play Darius maybe have an affinity for other top lane carries. And there it is, the Aatrox locked in right away. Maybe a little teaser for what's to come later with Maryville versus University of Western Ontario. I've seen both the top lane as Niles and Gorica, who should put on quite the show once they take to the stage. But very quick picks here for Woodstock. It's Kaisa and Sejuani taken away. These guys have great drafting so far. I don't know what we're, we were expecting, but knocking away the Kaisa and Sejuani, great pick so far. One of the strongest AD carries and a jungler that guarantees engage. So I think that Woodstock and Sunny Hills have come in, come here ready to play. That yeah, seems like it. There's a Lucian lock in. Nautilus gonna follow. 
These kids play all the meta picks. Yeah, I mean, these meta picks are meta for a reason. They allow you to snowball like no other. And when you've got Lucian and the Nautilus paired to the bottom lane, you want to be really aggressive. But answering with a Morgana would be beautiful. Completely nullifying Nautilus's ultimate, one of the nastiest abilities in the game. And now you always have to be reactive. You have to wait for Morgana to use that black shield before you even think about casting your ult. Yep, also can flex it around. We'll see maybe if Morgana wanders somewhere other than perhaps support, but we moved very swiftly into phase two of Vans. No one messing around as Malzahar gonna get taken off the table. That's a mid lane Malzahar there, not wanting to see that pick. Just so annoying, pushing the wave, forcing you to buy a QSS, that Malzahar attack, and no one wants to deal with that pestiness. All right, we'll see what the first ban here in phase two is for Sunny Hills. It is Aurelia. Gonna take some carries out of the pool of the solo laners and protect that Aatrox first pick a little. Yeah, the Aurelia is a good one because you have Black Shield, so you want to get rid of all these bruisers that would be further enhanced by having the invulnerability or other magic crowd control resistances. So I think that it's a good idea, and we probably are going to see another bruiser taken away, maybe even a Jax. That's a good one. Well, Vladimir also the other band for Woodstock, so respecting that likely at least one solo lane is still to go. Possibly two. We've seen Aatrox flex in jungle already here at the College Championship. But Lissandra, again, another really strong flexible solo lane taken away. So we'll see what Woodstock want to do here. We're kind of looking at Morgana and Kaiser as the duo lane, although again, there is some flexibility there. I imagine they want to counterpick for top lane if possible. So maybe just something like a standard mid lane up makes sense here or you just continue the train of flex picks so they have no idea of what you're doing. Yes, that's probably a cannon top, but you always have to consider that you could flip that cannon into the mid lane, worst comes to worst. Yeah, absolutely. If you have to, you can move it, but pretty solid overall champion. Let's see how Sunny Hills finish off their draft here on the blue side. A lot of questions about where Aatrox and Nautilus are going, although we have started to see them settle into more established positions. Of course, the jungler are quiet as well, so Rek'Sai there for Rin Reforged. Such a good jungler right now. I personally am a Rek'Sai one trick, so anytime I see this champion be picked, I am super stoked. Already right. have the crumb seal of <laughs> approval. Every time, if you're playing Rek'Sai, you get that seal. It doesn't matter what you do on it because it's so easy to execute. That's the beauty about Rek'Sai. It's nearly impossible Ooh. not to do well, and when you have a Zoe to set you up in your gank, it gets even nastier. You hit him with the Prey Seeker, now Zoe has sight of you, she hits you with the bubble, and you get executed from a thousand range. Who are these kids? Shout outs to the, uh, oh, are they really gonna do this? I was just like, you know, I mean, we've seen Garen already in college and that was fun. Oh, they did it! This is one of the hottest Ooh. counter picks to Zoe. So this man is feeling bold. Magic Garlic do throwing it? down the gauntlet. I mean, we'll see. I'm excited to find out. <laughs> yeah, so Zed being able to chase Zoe through all her hoppiness and being able to knock her away in one quick assassination really powerful and when you have a Morgana to also assist you it means you're never gonna get hit by that sleepy trouble bubble let's see if magic garlic can get ahead early though because he does have a Sejuani on his side whereas Zoe he's got a rec site much stronger early game yeah we'll have to see how the jungle matchup shakes out I've seen a decent amount of rec site versus Sedge or Sedge versus more aggressive jungler throughout the top eight already so always have eyes to see where the junglers will be going and as you mentioned you're uh, certainly the uh, Play to watch on the Sunny Hill side. Not the Darius this time, but Aatrox can certainly get things rolling. Oh, I don't want to watch Darius. I want to watch Zoe versus Zed. Same. That's a matchup you rarely get to see that. Only in high school are the players bold enough to actually go for That's that. how you can tell they've played enough solo queue. Because they've probably played Zed versus Zoe both sides like a hundred times each. Probably Minimum. you're frustrated so much playing against Zoe, you have to find a counter pick if you don't want to play her yourself. So if you have one, it is good enough run it especially if you get invited out here to play in the same stages that all our pros do. exactly it's an invitational it's kind of a fun exhibition match show off your skills get some solo kills uh, I'm, I, as we said i'm expecting a pretty fast paced game at crumbs but we'll see i'm expecting to see a lot of these guys go up and grow to be pros or make it in some one way or another into the space i personally started getting into esports through my high school programs that was how it started for me so who knows? It might happen here again. I mean, think of the number of players of not this age, but like from effectively end of high school age that moved into academy, moved into LCS. Like, 
I love that the college program is providing an avenue for students to play League of Legends and to compete and have fun playing the game with each other. And also, you know, play on bigger stages, come out here, play in the college championship. But we haven't quite seen the connectivity yet from the college players moving into professional play. It just because for the most time. Because for the most part, if you're moving from somewhere like a school to professional play, you're moving from high school, right? Yeah. You're not moving from college, so... Certainly could be some future stars on the horizon, but let's just have a game here. And if you take a look at Sejuani, just wanted to point out, we're going to call him Rhythm. Right? It is His rhythm. name spells Rhythm. It just has a lot of R's. Got some rhythm in there, you know? A little bit of staccato. Rhythm. <laughs> he said he wouldn't do it, and you've already done it. All right, well, uh, very disciplined. 10 champ fan here along the river. Nobody wanting to get... I mean, that has to be their thing. I mean, we hear players a lot talk about, you know, their first times on stage and how nervous that can be, how uh, valuable stage time is for academy players even. And these plays, you know, for full-time players, essentially. So, not even essentially, they're our full-time professional players. So, I think for the college players, same thing. We've seen a lot of experience do well here on the stage. It's nerve-wracking. Every level one, if the opponents don't you show just up, don't want to get are, we getting are we getting invaded? Are we getting invaded? Where are they? Where are they? And then you see them in lane and you breathe a sigh of relief. All right, well, blue shit. So Rhythm is going to start off on the blue. Same side start here for the junglers. Renry Forge also with some help. But as you mentioned, certainly the lane to watch here in mid. Probably not for a while. So it does need a few levels to get going, but we'll see how Magic Garlic navigates his counter pick here. Just gonna be trying to get as many harass spells down when Zoe's using her spells on the minion wave. Pretty much how you want to be playing out that Zed. But Just don't get bubbled. That's the rule with every Zoe matchup. Don't get ganked by Rex. Like, don't try to use your shadow aggressively. That's the biggest one. Good point. The second you use shadow, that's when your opponent's looking to take you down. Yeah, you're like, maybe he's not there. The jungler's not there. Maybe I can use it now. As soon as you use it, jungler magically appears next to your lane. Nice hook down to the bot side. Nebula gonna be forced to flash away. As soon shanks straight in there. One auto needed to maybe finish that off, but does get both sums. Yeah, he's not gonna flash for that one. Knowing that Kanade does have that heal, it would save the Morgana out of there. But that just shows you the power of Nautilus, even into the Morgana. That's supposed to do really well with the spell shield. They cannot push the minion wave faster. Not Nautilus is E, even his W help way too much at shoving that minion wave. Even when you have a Kai'Sa that's supposed to be decently good at that, Lucian's even better. Well, see Rhythm popping up towards the top side of the map. Destiny right now with the Doran's Blade on the cannon. Doing nicely in the early levels, but I think somewhat expected. Again, this was the counter pick for him. Back down in bottom lane. Things are going to chill out a little bit more, but... Nebula especially has to be careful, particularly if the jungler does decide to visit. Oh, interesting. Rek'Sai is going for a recall so that she can get boots right away and two control wards. This man is a team player. I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't think I see this in Challenger. No, no. I don't think I see this in Academy. No one ever does this. That so, is a disciplined play. I think he wants to go to the bottom side and get control wards for his bottom lane and mid lane. That way, Zoe will not get snowballed onto by Zed. And that Lucian and Nautilus can continue to be aggressive, but a gank in the mid lane. Wrap around mid, looking for the Q, doesn't quite land it, but still finds the tag. Is Rinry Ford gonna try and turn it back around? Magic Garlic straight in there, but Rhythm gonna give the buff away. Rinry Ford, too strong, Magic Garlic gonna be the next one. It's the double kill for the Rex side. The boots allow the Rex to get back into the matchup, gets two kills now, paying off so much. And he's so fed. Now look at them getting in there. Getting that deep vision, the Nautilus and Lucian are going to help him out, and he even gets the Scuttle Crab to boot at the end of that. This man is on a next level play. Yeah, it was almost maybe a worry where Rhythm got that crab and could have got the second, but tries for this gank and Rhythm Forge reads it like a book. You just don't expect the Rexa to be right there, and the Zed committing, hoping to try to get the Zoe, but she had burned the flash to make sure that she did not get one shot in that gank. Now we have a Rek'Sai that's really snowballed. This is why the champion's so good. Knows when the counter jungling is happening. Ooh, again, again looking for the gang. The hook lands in. Straight to the bottom line. Nebby alone. No thumbs. Dead. As Dravine picks one up. Woo. Ren reforged three ganks in a row. All, all he needed was boots. 100% kill participation. It was those boots. It's what lets Rek'Sai be so good as she gets to move around the map. Look at the gank route. She gets to go from behind you. Flashes in, so difficult to anticipate and defend against. All right, well, Rhythm now on the top side. 
Yore trying to keep the wave away from the tower, but let's watch this again. Wraps around the back of the tower, flashes for the knockoff in the shield, just a touch too late. And he was in sight. They had an idea that Rek'Sai was there. They just did not expect them to pull the trigger so quickly that the flash was going to come in and that the damage was going to be enough because they didn't even try to go for Morgana. They went for Kai'Sa and just had enough burst to turn on Morg. We'll see Sick Dot roaming up again. Has the control ward. Rhythm does put one down, but has to be a little careful here. Although, is he going to go back in onto the Zoe with no flash? Needs one more auto stun, doesn't quite buffer through. And Magic Garlic, not sick, so can't really go for the all in. That was really close. I think had he buffered that stun, Zed would have been able to make it. He has flash and ignite still with an electrocute. That's enough damage to take down the half HP so yeah. Did actually hold onto some, which I think is what I missed in the last engagement in mid. So Magic Garlic, when he hits six. Can maybe start to look for some sort of all-in, but have to keep tabs on the Rek'Sai, who went from boots to chilling smite and double long swords. Yeah, she's very fed, but I want to see his counterpart rhythm get back in the groove. I mean, you're a Sejuani. Falling behind a little bit is expected. So when you hit that level six, you got to start making some plays. Already level five, so one more level and we get to see them make a very aggressive moves around the map. See us looking good though on rhythm side, so certainly getting things going. Keep an eye on those ultimates for the junglers, as you mentioned. As Magic Garlic gonna use that shadow for a bit of extra harass. Sick Top pops the portal jump. As in the middle lane, we have a room here from the bot side. Ping's on mid. They're gonna try to four man Z here, see if they can bait him in. Never feels fair on V4. Magic Garlic gonna have to hold on to the shadow. Sees the Nautilus. Does have the flash, should be safe here. Does. Does use the shadow, but just to be extra safe. <laughs> just a casual, we're watching you. Bottom lane is always looking out for this Zed lane, and they don't lose anything by moving into the map. They have control wards in the right side of mid and in their tri bush in bottom lane, so they get to make it right back into the minion wave as soon as it's crashing. Maybe missing one or two creeps, but worth their while because that Zed is now even more scared to go aggressively onto Sick Dot. Rhythm also sneaking into the brush here. After his bot lane was able to push out from that roam, not level 6 just yet, but if Sun Chang steps too far forward, could be a tough sell. Does have both Sums and the Nautilus behind him, so we'll see how patient Rhythm is willing to be here. He's very close. I think some Ooh, this is it. Nice black shield as well. They're going to go in onto the Lucha. They find the Binding Nebula. Gonna set it all up and Rhythm! Had it all along. The brush gang for Sejuani, you just don't expect it, especially before level six. You're thinking she's gonna be out there farming and last hitting, but now she's one minion away from hitting level six. And a fight here at Dragon could be very deadly, but oh, an all in mid. Goal, can pop the death mark, but already dead to the ignite. Sick dot. Able to find the solo kill there. That Seeker's arm guard is what allows Zoe to be so aggressive against the set. She's not worried about getting all in, so she gets to be super aggressive knowing that the jungler showed in the bottom lane and gets a solo kill. See, Destiny does not want to face check the Aatrox, trying to keep the wave near the turret. Aatrox, though, despite the early pressure cannon, was able to put out. Let's actually go on ahead and see us at least briefly as we'll watch this one again. Yeah, just too low, and Zoe at this point is kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. And so he actually takes the shadow back to avoid the paddle start, but Zoe with her W, more than enough damage to combo him off his ignite. Well, that's a little lethality now, but I think the arm gun may be there too soon. Let's see if maybe some assistance can come in. Speaking of rhythm, now level six. We're gonna go over the wall. Morgana not quite there yet, but I think with Killer Instinct, they might just fancy going in for the 3v2. He's thinking about it, but the minion wave is so big and they just have no vision. Look at how much control Sunny Hills has on this bottom side. They're now able to move into this dragon and they're gonna give it up. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, they might wanna try and fight, but Zoe has the push on mid lane. So TP gonna come in. Woodstock looking to fight for this one. Rhythm absorbing the ulti from Nautilus with the black shield there out of never the destiny. Flashes into the pit, Rin Reforge already killed the jungler, but Kanata in the back with the killer instinct. Gonna try and finish off the job. Jungler needs to go down. The Drake's still up for grabs to beat. Needs to grab it. Who's gonna get it? The Drake goes to Zoe. Destiny falls with a snipe out from the W for Kanata. Finds the next kill onto Javine. Sick dog looking for the bubble, finds Kaisa. But the Black Shield gonna save it. And that fight was so bloody. It looked like the fight was gonna go all for Sunny Hills. Tate able to start that dragon to secure it, but the Black Shield onto the not onto the 
Wani saves so much time. Rek'Sai makes it out of the pit, abandoning the Drake, and so everybody's now trying to secure this final Dragon. One hit of Nautilus taking 75 HP, and the final auto from the Zoe had a 14 HP Infernal Drake, and she's able to make it out. But man, the fact that the top lanes both had Teleport and were able to get down there means that both these teams are just looking for any opportunity to brawl 5v5. But now this Kai'Sa, 2-0 and 2, and I actually saw this earlier in college and I couldn't quite get wrap my head around it. But Mana Muni here for Kai'Sa. That's right, it's the new build out of Kai'Sa right now. You're usually going to Mana Muni because you want to be spamming your abilities so much. You can clear the minion wave out constantly. I believe it might proc the single target on your W if you can land it, so it does that enhanced damage of single target. And, well, somebody else has to run Mana Muni. It can't just be Ezreal, so <laughs> we're trying to take some items away from him. And I like it. Again, they're definitely up to snuff with the new solo queue hotness. Rhythm in the top side, looking for URA, but it's a 2v2 as Rune Reforge was here first. Stunland onto Aatrox, doesn't have world under Destiny. Able to grab the kill, and now they're actually in real trouble. Protobot Pop looking for the next stun. Cannon trying to follow up as Rin was forced to flash. And they did not have an timing on Cannon Ultimate or a very good minion wave to fight. There is so many creeps for the side of Cannon and Sejuani that it just made no sense to engage her. So they're very back and forth. Should we go in or should we not? In the end, Aatrox goes down, but Rek'Sai is still 3-1-1, not willing to give up any of that bad experience. Very interesting mix as far as where the power in the map goes, but we'll talk about that after this replay. It's really, again, well set up by Rhythm. Look at the Rex are just unsure. Do I go in there? Do I have enough damage? Sejuani is just so tanky, and you have to focus the cannon, but he's also quite difficult to take down. Having a little bit of resistance in his ultimate now that was about five seconds away, so it's difficult to keep track of those abilities when you don't know if they have a lot of cooldown reduction. And you usually need to know the ultimate timing, the CDR, the last time that he used it. It's too much work. You can see... For Sunny Hills, it's really that midsection of the map, the Zoe and the Rek'Sai that are getting things going. But on the other side, it's kind of the opposite end of the map for Woodstock that are looking good right now. Destiny 2, 1 and 3 with a gold bouncy there. And Kanade is certainly the player to watch on the Woodstock side. 2 0 2 will be very swiftly in towards the two items. And Kaiser is a Real good champ when she gets online. Yeah, and she's gonna have that black shield. I can't stress enough how important that ability is against Zoe and Nautilus, allowing these carries to just go uncontested, uncc And when that's the case for Rek'Sai and Lucian to deal damage, and even the Aatrox, it gets really tough because they're not the greatest at just finding these targets that can move around the team fight so effortlessly. The gold currently in favor of Sunny Hills, but up by less than a thousand. So that Drake is kind of, I think, their bigger advantage. Maybe this as well, as Renry Forge is going to go ahead and start the Rift Herald. Sick Dot really opening up a lot of the map with the lead on Zoe, but you can see Yorei also pushing the lane, making sure to cover for his jungler. And look at the vision that Sunny Hills has. I love that this team is prioritizing having control wards on the map. You can see the little toggle there. We just saw that Woodstock had pretty much just one control ward in the back, and the normal ward in the top try for Kennen, whereas the bottom one for Sunny Hills has two control wards. They're able to push up relentlessly without fear of getting ganked, even in the try, so that Zed can't roam towards the Zed. So they're really addressing the points at which they want to be playing aggressive and preventing the points that Woodstock wants to be using on the map to snowball. And all of that to say that there's actually a lot of vision and planning and strategy that's going in. There's a nice bubble there from Sick Dot. Slam onto the Zed. Oh, goodness gracious. Flash forward ignite. Deathmark not gonna make it count. Sick Dot with another solo kill. Are you sure Zed counters, Zoe? That doesn't look like a counter pick to me. <laughs> yes, but not, <laughs> obviously not now. <laughs> Sick Dot navigates the matchup very well. <laughs> Well, he now has Mercury Treads, which is a really good purchase when you're dealing with that heavy crowd control. Oh, Flash ult, he finds the stun. World Ender already popped, and that's a kill for Cannon once again. It looked almost way too easy, but the part that was beautiful is that Aatrox's Flash was one second from coming back up. Literally one second. When he died, it just came up. So they timed that summoner spell perfectly committed to the gank using their own summoner spells. That's Woodstock having a really good understanding of their power spikes and the opportunities that the opponent summoner spells present for them. Well, watch this again. I, mean, I love the attempt for the Shadow Dodge, but as soon as the bubble hits, it's all over. 
Oof, that's nasty. That's not even a Zoe that's prioritized damage because the whole point of going Seekers is that you're not dealing that much damage. It's a defensive item. Oh, didn't need it as we pointed out. See how Magicolic navigates the mid to late game because he'll either have to side lane or try and find angles in team fights given how strong the Zoe has gotten in the 1v1. Destiny, however, attention from the jungle are really taking it to the Aatrox in top lane with the CS lead has now taken the first turret. So this map, very polarized crumbs. We've got two Infernal Drakes on the Sunny Hill side that are kind of taking control of that section of the map, but it's all Destiny and Rhythm in the top half for Woodstock. Those Infernals guarantee that you're going to be able to outscale. You're already looking at 14% damage increase, and when you have champions like Zoe, Lucian, Aatrox, and Rek'Sai, they're all getting so much benefit out of that increased AP and AD that they're guaranteed to almost always be stronger at many stages of the game, even if there's traditionally champions that would get outscaled by the likes of a Kaisa. Which jungler is going to move first here? It's going to be a 3v3 here as they'll both sneak into shrubberies. Javine going to find Rhythm first, but they don't know that Rin is there yet. Maybe suspecting with some of the sweeping out, but another bubble lands. TikTok going to look for it. Doesn't fall to jump, didn't have it. Good thing that he used Living Shadow there. Oh, there's a the knockup. Good Black Shield, Nebula Fast Fingers. That's two ultis down. Sun Chang lucky to not eat the next binding as Rhythm comes back down to cover. They are so bold, but also a little BM not giving Morgana any credit in her ability to use the Black Shield onto Kanade. Nautilus does use that ultimate, but it's a pretty short cooldown, surprising. You see Garlic also trying to give respect. Another good hook land. Black Shield gonna be late. Forced to burn the flash as well. Ignite down the on the sunny hill side. Very hard to compete against a Lucian that has a Blade of the Ruin King right now. Every single trade that looks like this is gonna benefit Lucian just because he can life steal back on the way. Kaisa does not have that. She just has mana, attack speed, and damage. So any trade that is not an all in right away that results in her being wounded is gonna always force her to play far back and maybe even have to base. Destiny coming into the mid lane now as the Rift Herald does get the second charge. Nice timing there from Rinri Forge. Was about to run out, but. With the push being set up by Sigdot, was able to take that turret. In fact, with their 2v2, they start a bottom lane, actually looking to get two and take the lead in structures here. That should be enough. So the Gintus is now there for Kanade. The transform probably not too far away on the Mana Mune, but all of a sudden, like, kind of the point of power, the other point we were looking for here in the bottom side, kind of been broken open as the map continues to open up. But we can never forget that there is a cannon that is 3-1-3 on Woodstock's team. This cannon, if you can find a good teleport and a good flank, can swing any team fight, regardless of how fed the Lucian or Zoe may be. He can lock them down and burst them. There's no magic resist, it's only armor and a stopwatch. Well, we'll kind of look to see what happens perhaps around the next objective. Next trick is Cloud in a number of minutes, but of course Baron is going to spawn for the first time in this game in two minutes' time. Well, I think that these teams are not going to be going for crazy Barons just yet, although it would be nice to see what their approach to taking Baron is, because I would imagine that Sunny Hills is a little bit more methodical just based on the prioritization of vision that they've had so far. Do you expect to say... Vision, priority, and methodical. When in you a can, high school game? Absolutely. Game. I think these kids are great. I think that, what, like I was saying, you have more time to play than in most other professions or stages in your life. So I think that they have all the potential to be very talented. But remember, you're playing solo queue. This is a very different environment. So it's impressive to me to see like how like well drilled they are as a team. Although I hold that thought as Magic Girl, like going to be forced to flash away. Look for Soon Chang there. Did get a flash, but had to use his as well. And now Rhythm might be starting something. Does have the ulti ready. Destiny also down here did warp with his objective that's coming up. Well, they're not giving Zed an opportunity to start getting any kills. So as long as he stays off the board, they're going to be happy because an assassin that hasn't gotten any kills isn't really much of an assassin. Yeah, it's kind of in the name. We don't get any assassinations. Can be rough going. Blue buff, though, going to be handed off. Looks like Destiny is going to get that. I think they know they need to build strength here for this next fight. And by this grouping, they're really going to look to contest for this next Drake. It is a Cloud Dragon, so it's not the mandatory you have to fight Dragon, but it's still one that I think 
Woodstock wants to fight because they have a cannon available. They don't have very good wards to TP into it, but look at that. There's some pings into the minion wave bottom lane, so he has to address that because that would have been the place where a cannon would TP into if the dragon was to be contested. Looks like they heard you because they're actually going to back off the objective as Yore was pushing the top lane. Destiny decided he didn't want to lose that. Going to look for the Aatrox here, finds the first stun, pops the ulti, but the world end are going to be popped in response. Yore, they're going to have to keep running away. Can he find the knockups? Doesn't get the first one. Looking for the next, a good stopwatch there. World end running out. Magic Cutter looking for his first kill, does find it. And that said, getting on the board really nice from your Destiny. I think he had the opportunity to go for the solo kill had he kited a little bit more, but opting to give it to his main man in the mid lane. Love the choice. Rhythm in, looks for the ulti, finds the back line. Soon Chang gonna eat the ulti, but now the fight gonna break out 4v4, but Rhythm running out of health pretty rapidly. Good stopwatch there as the culling comes out. There's the Zed diving in, Magic Gun. Gonna try and make all the plays. What's the assassination with the Rex style? Gonna keep him alive. Actually, no still died underneath the ground, but Zoe with a triple kill out of nowhere. The Zig Top putting Sunny Hills on his back. Cannon teleported in and found some kills in return as well. Aatrox was still down, so unable to participate in that team, but overall, it's a three for three. Now it's getting wild, Crumbs. 21 kills in 21 minutes, and things were kind of slow going for the first 15. We were discussing beforehand what the ratio of minutes to kills was going to be. We were thinking it was going to be three, and look at that. Rhythm, he doesn't even care about the Nautilus that's bound. He goes straight for the Lucian right away, so there's nobody to follow up on him. Buy some time with the stopwatch. Zed decides to go in and gets the Rek'Sai. Here's a tidbit. In the Rek'Sai ultimate, you're not going to be able to dodge any spells that are going to register in that meantime. So you can dodge out of things like Karthus ultimate, but you can't get out of a Zed damage exploding or things like an Ignite or a damage over time. Can you get out of Armatello? That's the other one. Yes, you can. You can. Interesting. Okay, so but yeah. you can use it if you, tether, if you are tether. If you oh, if tether red, tether. if you're locked down, you can't use the ability. Okay, so it's kind of like Vladimir. Yeah, got it. See, today I learned something. Thank you, Combs. Well, those three Drakes looking a little imposing on the Sunny Hill side, but turrets in their favor as well means that they kind of have a run of the map at this point. That being said, Magic Garlic now with two items, Cannon building towards his third. The need to see large rod. Sunny Hill's grouping up. Gonna try and find a few more fights here. It's a 5v5 that's about to break out. Oh, so we. So good in Fog of War. You can see Woodstock's just trying to move around, get the vision down. Pick up the Zoe rhythm engages. Kanata in the back. Start finding Gil Lambo. Got her straight in there as well. It's an absolutely massive team fight as Destiny. Gonna pop it off. Kanata is still dead to Rinri Fort. Backline being dug left and right. Bubble lands in. They need to protect Garlic, but it's gonna be too late. Too much strength here. On the sunny hillside is Destiny trying to get out of there. But the first knockup lands, the bubble follows up, and that's Curtains as Cannon at least gets the shutdown. But he gets a really nice shutdown, and yes, it is an ace for Sunny Hills. It's a five for three, which is just a crazy bloodbath, and I can't wait to see how that fight broke out because we saw Kaisa immediately jumping in there with her ultimate. One turret in response. There was just no no vision, no setup. It was all about let's get in there because Sejuani jumped right away and used her ultimate to get the party started. It felt like Destiny was like, this is the cannon ult that's winning us this team fight. And I think the stopwatch may have something to do with it. Let's find out. So the Morgana gets stunned right away. So she doesn't have the black shield to assist in this fight, which ends up making a pretty big deal. So Sejuani goes in, hoping to get the ultimate onto the Zoe, unfortunately connect onto Nautilus. And while the binding does find Zoe, she does use that stasis to buy a lot of time. Zed takes out Lucian in the back line, but the Aatrox and Rex I did way more work taking down the Morgana, taking down the Kai'Sa, taking down everybody. Yeah, again, basically just ignoring the other back line. Ignoring the front line and going straight for the carries. Two divers, two physical divers that can constantly chase are very threatening. Nice find. Rhythm getting out of there with a bit of assist from the Black Shield, and his war mugs will heal that up nice and easy. So Tony's starting to build tankiness. Destiny just finished a death cap, by the way. He might be a Korean import. Death cap third, my goodness. I mean, again, if this cannon finds one angle, there's team, no MR. Team fight's gonna be over. There's no magic resist on this team. There's one no magic mantle and Nautilus having the Aegis. So if you hit the so, if you hit the Lucian, the Rexa, all the targets that you really care about, yeah, they're gonna be deleted. 
Gold's still staying relatively even. Sunny Hill's up 2,000. Have vision here on the Baron, but what's up? Gonna go for the vision clear at least. Magic Garlic running into the Aatrox. Trying to tend the side lanes right now, but does not have TP. Remember, Aatrox does, so can join the Baron if that's where they force. We do have a Mountain Dragon about to spawn. Sunny Hill is in complete control to take this objective. They're trying to get a bait, but Kaisa spots and gets hooked. Really nice hook, but again, they turn it back around. Javino, pretty tanky. Is Blue Buff going to get started and finished? I think Destiny once again will get the handoff. Magic Garlic pops the Ghost Blade, looking to try and find a fight. Rhythm ready with the ulti. Always super scary when he's got those jazz hands. And Mountain Drake just kind of bounces back and forth. Woodstock, if you want the Drake, you have to steal it or fight for it. Destiny going to go in, gets Death Touch over, he pops the ulti. An absolutely massive slanting maelstrom. They get the Drake, but at what cost here for Sunny Hills? Almost everybody dead as Soon Chain, the only survivor. Cannon was so huge, handing their own Destiny to Sunny Hills. And this Cannon 9 and 2 flashes into the fight. They did not remember that Cannon had the ability to flash in there and get the Morgana Black Shield to make it even stronger in that fight. They wipe the floor with them. And that's gonna be Baron as well. Sunny Hill's in so much control, but now the goal's gonna flip flop back, flip flop back over to Woodstock. Unfortunately, they didn't get the Drake. That's about the only consolation for Sunny Hills on that play. There's not a whole lot of consolation when you just got wiped like that. Let's take another look at how this fight. So keep your eyes on Kennen. Goes in, but flashes instantly. The depth charge does connect, actually. There was no black shield, but because he was so quick with his ultimate, the stuns and the damage came through before he got knocked up. It's not going to stop his ultimate. It's not going to stop the damage. Really great situational awareness of what needed to be done for that fight to be won. Yep, and again, doesn't have Zonia's stopwatch is broken. Went death cap, but like, can only go in and stay in. But found the angle, and all of a sudden, gold's... Flops back over, now it's Woodstock that are 2,000 gold ahead. Looking to get uh, quite a few more turrets for themselves. There is a lot of standing gold they can take with this Baron. So here's what they need to do. Next time, don't clump up as five against Cannon. Try to spread out. Remember how it worked in the top side of the map with Aatrox and Rek'Sai on one side, Lucian in another, Nautilus and Zoe in another. By keeping everybody separate, Cannon does not get as much value from his ultimate. Magic Garlic like also, I mean, really just pushing the waves in and trying to threaten the turret while the rest of the team probably should be pushing at least in mid lane. That's where they'll start. Sunny Hills are fencing a counter shove there in the top lane. Trying to buy as much time as possible and kind of distract them while they're trying to push with the Baron buff, but Baron pushes a little bit faster yeah, for random champions. It's a strange location to be pushing in because there Ooh, is no tier two, side. but it's so, it's not a listen Lucian staying. Are they trying to go for Zed? They want the tower, I think, try and trade for an infiv. By the looks of things, Magic Garlic, they're just going to wave clear. That's two turrets already dead. The mid push continues. It's only Rin Reforged. Now Sickdrop's going to join in. Nebula with a huge bubble. As Edwani falls asleep, Rhythm going to look to die. Destiny going into the backside. There's the ulti out. Gets a sudden direct side. Kanade, Killer Instinct's over. Aatrox, though, going to try and finish off a few more kills. The World Ender on, forcing the flash out of the Kaiser. As Sickdrop is defending, also topside broken open. As Magic Garlic gonna get run down by the Nautilus. Oh, he shadows out, he might be okay. TikTok gets picked up by Kanade, who's gonna now get the in him. Absolute madness across the rift. In the top side of the map, Magic Garlic 1v2. He takes down the AD carry and defends the inhibitor. They did not lose that one, only the tower. So in the end, it's a really good trade for Woodstock. And you know what? I, I like the idea of force, trying to force something when you feel you're strong when the enemy has Baron, but that was, whew. It was bold. It was a crazy call. The fact that they go for that, but they it's the kind of call that you just get so surprised that you get thrown off guard. You, what do we do? Do they know something that we don't? Why are they pushing against Baron without the AD carry and Nautilus? That's because they know they're not going to be able to stop the wave through. They're not going to be able to stop the push, try to answer something else. The game is most likely not going to be lost, so give it a shot. And that is just a great attitude to approach League of Legends. I mean, losing mid inhib certainly not the end of the world. It's the easiest inhib to defend. It's only one. Baron is wearing off, but yeah, let's watch this again. So the Black Shield once again gets used right away, and but a really great binding is it prevents Rek'Sai from ulting in or using more of her abilities and chasing further against the Sichuan. The Aatrox finds the reset, and that's why he's able to stay out there, be really aggro, but another stopwatch prevents someone else from going down. 
And this is that single target damage that the Kai'Sa with the Man Immune does. She just eliminates you. Meanwhile, top side of the map, let's see how Zed did this. So that's a Golic dodged out of the ultimate with his own. That's typically how you would have expected it to go down, so it's not like we didn't miss it. Nice play. Magic Golic defends the hip. Dive. Yep, going in for a Kanade, diving in after the Sedwani follows through, but that damage too much. The counter engage with the cannon ulti! Absolutely ridiculous! But didn't have the Zonya's back to pop it again, so now it's re-engaged from Sunny Hills. Kanade dead. That's gonna be the ace! But Magic Golic is split pushing mid! He's trying to end it! Is he gonna be able to stop the teleport? I think oh. one more auto, he's not gonna go for yeah, it. Yeah, needed maybe three, and not gonna be enough there to prevent the TP from happening. So Edge of Night prop, he's going in, he wants the 1v1! He's trying to make a montage! This man's a madman! He gotta get the shutdown! This is why he took Zed! He what knew he could do this! in the garlic crumbs! <laughs> <laughs> I want him to make my food, I only use garlic, I'm a bad cook. I disagree. I think that makes you an excellent cook, but let's talk about this man in the mid lane. My goodness, Magic Garlic from getting first the fight right. in the top lane because you are Destiny utilizes his E. It's down right now. He's not able to engage when he wants to. Now it's back up and Sejuani goes in, but look at the depth charge from Nautilus. This is what makes a really big difference. It catches Kennen before he gets to go in. The time that it went well, Kennen had already used the ultimate by the time he was knocked out. That's what made a huge difference here because it looked like Kennen was about to get off another A-class ultimate. So Nautilus saving the day, no noticing that Black Shield was not available. And then this happens. Magic Alex like, you know what? I got this edge of night. We can get in there. So much damage here. The Ignite and then the minions helping out one little bit at the end. And then Jazz Hands out of there. That's Woodstock. And move down to the Drake, they'll take their first for themselves. Unfortunately, it's only a cloud that will trigger the spawn of the Elder Dragon. So you have to feel the confidence is building. Magic Garlic was getting bullied in lane by enemy mid and jungle, and now he is making plays as the game drags later and later. He's almost at a full build now. He's got one more item missing, about to complete the armor penetration and healing reduction item, and no one can answer him. He one-shot the Aatrox. Zoe's not going to be able to deal with that. She's going to have to pop her Zanyas right away when Zed goes in. So this man, knowing what he needs to do as Zed, to the point where if you leave him alone, he's going to end the game. He almost did it one time. Yeah, level 16 now starting to shove down Tara. It's actually a nice spot here for Woodstock. If they can fade the engage. Javine looking for a Rinry for Draws are going to follow in as Rhythm. Going to get caught up, but he's trying to get himself over the wall. They can't really salvage this, but Destiny with the ulti. Oh, not where he wants to go. He's looking for the back line, but Kanade makes it work instead. I take it all back. They find the counter punch, but Soon Chang grabs the kills as Magic Garlic. We're going to once again save the day, but too many kills over the Sunny Hills as Lucian able to grab the Triple. He's getting chased down. He can't go on to Aatrox until the Blood Well goes away, and he's not even going to go for it. But what can Lucian and Zoe accomplish in the mid lane? I think they're going to be able to get just one inhibitor. Yeah, I think Zed right now needs to get out and back to base to try and defend. See if Fiore is able to find the Zed and prevent that recoil from coming out. Also, respawns not that long on both the Sedwani and the Morgana, so that actually will stop the push, but really nice force here from Sunny Hill. So they're not going to go for it. Instead, we're going to take a look at this fight. Black Shield is down once again, so they're able to do quite a bit to the Rex side, but the second that the Cannon Ultimate goes in and he commits, they know, Sunny Hills knows they can go into this fight. Cannon has been the only thing that's been giving them troubles. And while you do get the stopwatch out of Kaisa, it's not enough. She just stands in one place and delays her death. Yeah, Javine with a really nice ult. As soon as Kaisa went in, and Kanada's been very aggressive on the Kaisa, able to lock that down and really shut down any potential for that fight to be carried through. So now the kill's starting to mount up. We've been on quite the ride here. Up this isn't down, Disneyland, this is down. the uh, LCS Arena here in Los Angeles, but it's been a roller coaster. That's right, these guys are just trying to get as many team fights in. The practice here is amazing, and this is just another great move. This is S tier gameplay. The fact Baron. that you go for a Ninja Baron, you sneak it in, it might be a little bit too late. They don't have the mountain to be able to burst it down, so great scouting out of Sunny Hill. And they leave! Well, no, yeah, they, Soul Queue, everyone's dead. They didn't have mountain. They didn't have mountain. I'm just, again, I am applauding the discipline of these players given their age. They don't have a coach. That's just I, them being good. If you told That's me, I would believe good. you. I'm saying that as a compliment. I No, I'm with you as Destiny. We're going to try and find the angle here as Baron has become the focus of this particular part of the game. TikTok going to get Pope Renry forward. Oh. Forced to flash. 
Went a little early on the engage. Bit of a regretful E there. Just clicked the wrong tunnel. And again, Magic Garlic is doing the right thing, forcing in a lane. We're going to pressure mid. That will force them onto the Baron. And Kaisa does Baron very quickly. Doesn't need a mountain to try and blast this down, but they are going to see it. Jungle could get in here. We might be having a 50 50 Destiny. Going to try and start the fight off the Black Shield's on as Magic Garlic trains down Sick Dot. You're already going to get in there late, but Magic Garlic straight in onto the Zoe will go down, but I think the Death Mark might proc for the counter kill. It does happen as Rhythm still dancing around. Kanade also alive, but does now get felled as URA able to find the fight. Sunny Hills at the Baron, able to defend. And soon Cheng and URA still alive. That's going to be yet another ace. The Aatrox is just way too strong now. The fact that he gets to get these. Ooh! And, and whoa, that trade means a lot. They're not able to get that Baron with the Lucian getting taken out. Otherwise, I think that Aatrox and Lucian can two-man that objective. Nine kills in front of the Baron pit crumbs. Only the Aatrox lives to tell the tale. And he's going to move straight to that inhib and look to try and take an objective for his team. He's got more than enough time, but let's take another look at how this goes down, because Destiny is half HP, but popping the ultimate and then the stopwatch right away buys just enough time. But take a look at this Aatrox, just hammering away. Not enough to do, or not enough for Kai'Sa to do a whole lot, because she tries to solo the Lucian. Unfortunately, he's way too strong at this stage in the game. You need a little bit more itemization as the Kai'Sa and Aatrox, well, his lifesteal, his damage is just bonkers if he's left untouched. Destiny's like, well, I'm going down, you're coming with me. 850 gold shot down for the cannon. Now with a spellbinder finish. He's full build with 14 kills. Again, it will only take one well-placed cannon ult to end a team fight. And he still does not have any spell penetration though. So that's one of the things that you would typically want to see when magic resist is starting to be stacked up. The Aatrox has a lot of MR now, even the Lucian's got a QSS, but he does have enough to burst down someone like a Zoe if she is hot. Well, it's not, you know, uh, traditionally tank front line, but between the World Ender and the GA that Rinderfort had in the last fight, certainly able to buy enough time to make it happen. However, GA is now on cooldown for Rinderfort. URA has not finished his Guardian Angel just yet either, and the Elder Dragon is up for the taking. Yeah, this dragon is in the hands of Sunny Hill. They have a mountain, letting them take that very quickly with the Blade of the Rin King Lucian. And having the top lane inhibitor that Aatrox just got means that somebody has to answer this top lane. And the second that they do, they'll just start that objective. Look at that. The wave is already at the base. They'll start putting the pressure on. And Woodstock can't respond. And now they're going to have to take a, fight, a 5v5 against an elder team that has four dragons, two of which are infernals, and one is a mountain. So that Baron is going to melt like butter. Yeah, I think it's a tough fight to try and win in front of the Baron, but... You have to now make a very tough decision. What's more likely, you winning at this Baron fight or you winning after they take the Baron? Both are very slim. I would take the, you try to take a fight in the base and hopefully get a cannon to try to flank. You have you a better steal? time to use a teleport on your cannon. Rhythm not gonna find the steal. Falls asleep instead to the Baron over to Sunny Hills. Their in him's back up in mid. Still supers streaming into the top lane for them as well for about three more minutes. This could be the last push of the game here. Sunny Hills on the precipice of taking this game. It could be. All they have to do is siege, use those Baron empowered minions to crack the base, get some poke down with the Zoe. One or two members are poked out, and you're good to continue taking inhibitors. Whereas Woodstock, here's the way back. Set deep vision in the lanes so that the Kennen can use the home guard teleport from behind, flanks in, gets a massive wombo combo, and you can end the game if you win a fight hard enough that and way. And still the Zed threatening the sidelines, although he's about to get collapsed on Magic Garlic. Gonna have to magic his way out of this one. Man, this is like a singe level Zed. Everyone's chasing him. Edge of Night pop, but now the chain's gonna land. Depth Charge over the top, and Magic Garlic. Gonna be a last hurrah in this little exchange. Dead. To Yore. So much damage. At least he drew them away from their base, but True. they are still escorting the minion waves, the Baron empowered minion to the top side. It's 52 seconds. Can Woodstock win a 4v5 against Baron and Elder? A miracle and a half would be necessary for them to do Looks that. Looks like one slicing maelstrom to me, Crumbs. You are Destiny still so strong, but Baron and Elder with this many elemental drakes. Oh, he's a tough ask. Now starting to run out of things to defend. All right, they are escorting topside, not looking to do anything in the mid lane. Instead, going for the end. 
All right, they are going to look for a kill. I think you have to make your stand here. Woodstock Academy, Rhythm going to go in. But the Drowsy Bubbles making it so difficult. You are Destiny goes straight into the back line. He took down Sicker, but he needs to get Soon Chang as well. Buying a bit more time at the wreck side. Too strong on the front side as the rest of Woodstock are burning down. Sunny Hills going to look to take down the last turret. And they'll take the Nexus here at the High School Invitational. And this is just a great display of what these kids have been practicing, what they can bring to the table. Teamwork, objective control, and great drafting. That was a good quality game in League of Legends. It was. It was. We really have seen these guys. If you took off the nameplates, you would tell me this is a regular, you know, spring season LCS match. I would say, okay, I see it. Well, players happy. Again, both pretty story teams seem moving in, but only one winner here at the Invitational, and today that is Sunny Hills. As they'll shake hands with their opponents. Absolutely. That was wild. How many kills? Some large number. <laughs> Look at what it's... I cannot carry. <laughs> 65. The back of his shirt says, I cannot carry. Not today. But I think he's being a bit facetious. He'll learn that word in whatever grade <laughs> you learn advanced English words. Raise a trophy as a team. Everybody get your hands in there. It's a team effort. They burnt the trophy. He's like, oh, I'm good, man. I want, <laughs> I want plenty of things. All right, he gets it. Nice. I don't know what I expected, but I'm, I'm glad we went on that ride together, Crumbs. Yeah, I mean, what it's a way such to a great bonding. You final. make friends in high school now playing video games. It's a, it's a really big deal that you can go out here and compete with your buddies, and you're doing something you love that you can actually transition into college and then transition even afterwards. It's great that we're trying to build up that circuit because I think that's where a lot of people find solace playing video games, and I did. I think that a lot of these guys do as For well. For sure. I mean, look, I played tennis. I played football, that's soccer. And uh, I played chess, you know? These are the sports I played. If I could have played League of Legends, is not a sport. I would have played. If one of these water bottles was empty, <laughs> it's going to your head. We'll talk about that later. Regardless, if I could have played League of Legends, would have played that 100%. <laughs> chess is not a sport. Why does he do this to me? What are you. What's happening? <laughs> it was still a fun activity I did. It's a my, comp competitive event. Program. Competitive activity. There you go. See? There we go. Yes. Gotta get the same thing. I would have played so. League, though. Yeah, if we could, way back, absolutely. I would have played League all the time. I played years. just about any game we could have snuck into the school computers, which turns out was quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are quite tech savvy. As yeah, they are. They're much better the than we are. And that's why they know that, that's why I trust them to be better at video games than an older crowd. They have oh. way more time. They can dive into it and are way more passionate. Like, they have less things in their head and just fully focused to what matters, which is the, that LP. I think the average is like half my age and about 100 times my ELO or something like that. Just <laughs> the skills on display here is really incredible. And it's great to see, again, high school programs being developed around the world and especially here in North America and potentially feeding the next generation of pros. Right, because this is happening here, but it's also happening in other parts of the world and other high schools where teams are competing. And so if you start building up the high school scene there, you're going to just have an influx of players coming in that are just very passionate, very talented, raising the level of skill across the globe in league. Again, you think about the age of these players, contracts, Mike Young, players that were effectively high school age, entering into academy and then LCS. Think about Poe Belter, who's I think now maybe college age, you know, maybe he'd be in second or third year, given how long he has played. Like, it is, as you said, you have free time. It's one of the times in your life where you can really explore lots of different things because you have a bit more freedom. And turns out when you play a lot of League of Legends, you get pretty good at it. For more on how they picked up the win on the big stage, though, Ovali is standing by with a few members from our victorious Team Sunny Hills. Thanks, guys. I am here with mid laner Sick Dot. Congratulations on the win. What was it like for you and your team to compete and win on the LCS stage? It was really fun and exciting because we never thought we were going to make it here, and then it just did. And we won, so we're happy for it. Yeah, we're, we're good to be here. Well, tell me about the entire experience for you. What was the biggest moment of this tournament? Well, it was hard in the first because, like, we've been practicing hard. But our team practiced really hard, so we got, like, good team comps and stuff. We got good teamwork, so it was really good to win with them. Yeah, we all did good, so, yeah. Now, you and your team have taken a win on this stage, and there are so many other teams, including LCS and the big league teams, who have taken wins. Are there any players or teams that you really look up to? Well, for now, it's like Team Liquid, because, yeah, I just like yeah. them. Yeah. 
they're fun, huh? Um, well, we actually have the college championship going on. We see the teams getting ready right behind you. Do any of those college and their esports programs with all of the League of Legends teams, do any of those stand out to you as a high schooler? Oh, UCI in general, because they're known to be like good esports team and stuff. And they actually play also, yeah. What year are you right now in high school? Uh, I'm graduating next, uh, this week, so senior, graduating. Do you have a college in mind, one that you're hoping to attend? Um, not sure yet. Not sure yet. <laughs> All right, well, UC Irvine, you saw him win. Come recruit this man. <laughs> um, last question for you. First time that you're playing on the stage, are we going to see you again? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stick that. Thank you and congratulations again. Going home with that trophy and for everyone else, stick around because after the break, we are going to see the college finals of University of Western Ontario taking on Maryville.